Dominicans seek to take advantage of free movement within CARICOM. Efforts to promote Dominica's citizenship by investment program underway in five countries and an appeals court matter involving police officer and Calixonian Abel John Baptist and Dr. Philbert Aaron pushed back to early 2017. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. First up, a CARICOM Secretariat official has assessed Dominica as having made significant progress on free movement of people and skills within the CARICOM. A series of workshops were recently held with stakeholders to explain how Dominicans can take advantage of the CARICOM single market and economy. Dr. Olivia Smith of the CARICOM Secretariat's Barbados office told Channel 5 News that ongoing awareness on the components of the CSME is still needed. Significant progress has been made in Dominica with respect to the facilitation of travel of CARICOM nationals, the movement of skills, the establishment of businesses and provision of services to a lesser extent. Um, we are happy to see the progress and the commitment being made by the government of Dominica to the whole process and uh, we hope that uh, we can sustain the effort at the regional level of helping uh, to recalibrate Dominica's position and for Dominica itself at the national level to continue to forge ahead with the process. While Dr. Smith would not say which country has made the most progress on the free movement of labor and skills aspect of the CSME, she noted all countries are making efforts. Free movement of labor and skills entitles CARICOM citizens to look for work in another country without having to produce a work permit. Obviously, uh, some will be moving at a little faster pace. We are working with all of them to ensure that the fundamentals are in place that all can increase the pace of implementation. On the court scene, the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal case involving Abel Checo John Baptist and Dr. Philbert Aaron has been adjourned to February 2017. The appeals court was forced to adjourn the matter because the lawyer representing John Baptist was struggling with the flu and Dr. Aaron was absent. He is reported to be on official state business in China. John Baptist was slapped with a $130,000 penalty by High Court Judge Errol Thomas after he failed to file a defense in the defamatory suit filed by Dr. Aaron. Dr. Aaron claimed that a song penned and sung by Checo in 2011 entitled Bug Her defamed him. John Baptist, the police officer, was given until August 22, 2016 to file and serve his defense on the quantum of money he was ordered to pay by the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court filling which the appeal would stand dismissed. Moving along to more top stories, promotion of Dominica's citizenship by investment program will continue this week in five different countries. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt made the disclosure when speaking to returning Dominicans last week. This program, my dear friends, is an important source of non-tax revenue for the country. In large measure, it is financing our recovery from Erica. And there are some who would want this to be evaporated so that they believe that the country would have a challenge, a difficulty, and the government would have, not have the ability to provide for its people. We are committed to the continued <coughs> transparency of the Citizens by Investment Program, as it is a major source of non-tax revenue for the country. As a matter of fact, I leave the country very soon to go on a, in one week I'll be going to about five cities to not only promote the country, but to promote and market our program because of the importance of it to our country. The Prime Minister reminded the public that the CBI program is transparent and supported by other regional and international governments. We speak of the Citizenship by Investment program. And notwithstanding all of this foolishness you usually listen to from time to time and you read on the internet about our program, I can say without any fear of contradiction that this program is highly transparent and we engage ourselves in a very robust due diligence exercise. And this program continues to receive the support of regional and international governments who have been assisting us in our due diligence program. And we have been able to stand the test of scrutiny 
from our international partners in respect to our program. A team of Chinese engineers have been on island carrying out final project design investigation work along the West Coast. This effort is geared at addressing damage done to the E.O. Libla and Dr. Nicholas Liverpool highways from tropical storms Erica and Matthew. Prime Minister Skerritt told the nation in his Independence Day address substantial sums would be needed to repair damage to these highways and bridges, which were extensively rehabilitated only a few years ago. Three bridges have been washed away along the E.O. Libla Highway. Progress on Dominica's highways are often undermined by each successive storm. We are grateful to the People's Republic of China for the firm commitment to underwrite the cost of the reconstruction of the E.O. Libla Highway. We will sign the implementation agreement and the economic and technical agreement with the government of China later this month to facilitate the project. We thank the government of the People's Republic of China for the continued solidarity and tangible expression of support to our country. China is also providing well over 2,500 solar streetlights for installation along the E.O. Libla and Dr. Nicholas Liverpool highways. Our plan is to have both of them completely lit within the next three to four months. Work will then begin on the lighting of all the roadways around the island. This, no doubt, will contribute to making the experience of driving on and using our roads at night much safer and more pleasant. An experimental move to create greater awareness on the importance of Dominica's nationhood is said to be well received by the public. Andrea Louis explains. That's the assessment after the first ever Emblems Week held during independence celebrations in October. Chairman of the Independence Committee, Raymond Lawrence, says promotion of the country's emblems is especially important among the youth. Well, I mean, our emblems are our symbols of our nationhood. The emblems help to identify us as Dominicans. It helps to identify Dominica as a country in the world with its own identity, with its own flag, its own national flower, national bird, and, and the other emblems, the national anthem, and so And so every Dominican must be very, very conscious, very aware, and very proud of their national emblems and what they signify within our culture, our heritage, our identity, um, as a people, as a people and as a country. Lauren says, as with everything new, there is always room for improvement. Well, what we did at the very start of the independence was to ask the schools in particular, and to also ask the media, and then to also ask community organizations to do the promotion of these emblems during the week. I know that the schools made an effort. I heard a couple of media houses promoting the emblems on some of the days during Emblems Week. Of course, there's improvement, a room for improvement in everything that we do. Um, there could have been maybe more promotion of it on the media, start, and maybe in the schools. and maybe in the public at large. The former chief cultural officer hopes this event becomes a mainstay on the country's independence calendar. As Dominicans, we are the ones that have to promote it. And then one person cannot do it all. Everybody, every single citizen in the country has to play a role, whether it's just hanging up the flag on your house or maybe in an office or at school and so, so everybody has to play a part in helping to promote the emblem. So we hope that um, hopefully Emblems Week could remain as part of the independence celebration so that every year we, we do a special highlight of our emblems. Emblems Week ran from 17th to 21st October this year. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the latest on Domlex's $2 million restoration project. That and more when we return. Thanks for staying tuned. Dominicans are increasingly seeking work in other CARICOM states as the country continues to benefit from the free movement regime. 
Labor Commissioner Dr. Matthew Libla says since the free movement of skills component of the CSME, more people are leaving the island for jobs. Our nationals are increasingly applying for the skills certificate and are increasingly finding employment in other areas of, of the Caribbean. We have much less people coming in to take our jobs. We have a lot of more people going out to take jobs um, elsewhere in the Trinidad, in Grenada, in St. Lucia and, 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 and Barbados and some other areas, in even Jamaica and Guyana. A CARICOM national wishing to live and work in another CARICOM state is encouraged to obtain a skilled national certificate. Dr. Libler's department is responsible for the processing of such a document locally. At the Labour Department, we live two particular areas. We are involved in Labour and as far as Labormatic <coughs> Regional Labour Information is concerned and also the immigration aspect as it relates to the, the processing of, of skill certificates. And our free movement regime in Dominica as far as the movement of persons are concerned is what, what really the Labour Division is involved in. And I'm the manager of the free movement desk and I report direct to the minister who is the free movement authority. We have an established accreditation board under the Ministry of Education if you have any issues with the qualifications that are presented to us. This is working without any difficulty. Dr. Libler recognizes that there is a need locally for more awareness of the benefits of the CARICOM single market and economy. We believe in Dominica there isn't sufficient knowledge among our people about the benefits and the opportunities that exist within the CSME. And therefore, we have been making, eff making efforts here under the, the, the chairmanship of Ambassador Gregoire, um, who is the OCS and CARICOM ambassador, to promote the CSME within Dominica. But um, the CSME unit itself is also assisting us in doing so, providing technical support. We still believe that except for a movement of a few skilled persons within some of the member states um, to seek employment, there isn't sufficient movement of business, there isn't sufficient movement of services, and we do not believe it's because there is no interest, we believe it's because the persons are not fully aware of the opportunities. In the energy sector, the approximately $2 million restoration project on the most susceptible part of Domlex Hydro Station is progressing slower than planned. Here is Andrea Louis with more. Following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica last year, the power company's hydro stations in the Roseau Valley were significantly impacted. Earlier this year, the media was told that the most vulnerable section was the Padu Power Station in Trafalgar, and if this station received more structural damage through severe weather systems, it would be a brutal blow to Domex generation capabilities. The rainy weather associated with the hurricane season has greatly impeded Domex progress on the restoration project. The, the infrastructural works that had to be done there, uh, we have now started. We, have, we are about 30% uh, complete. By now, we expected to have been about 50% complete, but those very weather systems, including um, Tropical Storm Matthew that came through, affected our, affected our progress um, significantly. There were periods of many days when we could not enter the river. As, as per the last tour, a lot of the works, a lot of the infrastructure work. Apart from reinforcing the structure at Padu Headworks, the company is also completing restoration at the turbine house in Trafalgar. What we are also doing at Trafal at Padu, which we are about 90, 90 odd percent complete, is that we have enhanced the, the, the turbine house. So we're putting infrastructure, additional infrastructure and additional protection um, to prevent, to mitigate what happened the last time where the power station itself was breached and a lot of flooding and mud and land and so on we entered the power station and, and covered the equipment and rendered it unavailable and, and uh, not usable. So we have put a lot of work into upgrading the power station and the turbine house. So that is almost complete. Dominic Generation Manager does not foresee the cost of the restoration project being heavily affected by the delay caused by the weather and he is confident that the project at Padu Headworks will be completed by the end of the year. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. In other news, the local University of the West Indies Open Campus has captured the Principal's Award for Best Department for 2016.
Dominica currently has four public lectures out of the 44 sites and has managed to remain committed and also impressed within the three-year review for this award. And in addition to those four staple public lectures, we also have other lectures, we have thesis presentations, we have film wrap sessions, and so we have a lot of activities that we do. Our student guild is also very active and very engaging and uh, about four members of our current student guild also serve on the regional guilds. So that also is a plus for us. We hosted a country conference in May of this year and so that was also something that was um, a plus for us um, in terms of the um, reviewers, the appointments committee, looking at the things that we had done. Joseph says the site started writing the local programs which are sent to quality assurance for approval and shared with other the open campus sites. If you had to name one thing that differentiates um, Dominica's sites apart from the others, in your opinion, what would you say? I think what differentiates the Dominica site from any other site is our commitment to the people and our belief that um, we can do so much here. Our small site has so much potential and we are always ready and always willing to partner with, with those who want to share ideas and who want to bring initiatives to the Dominican people and I think that, that sets us apart because we have really seen that there's tremendous potential in our small country. It's early childhood education month and there are a number of activities already underway. Here's Deslin Joseph with more. So as part of preschool month, MAP and used team have decided to go to various preschools to find out what they're up to. Right now we're at the Massac Preschool with head teacher Miss Lafoe and we're going to find out what this preschool is actually up to. Could you introduce yourself please? I am Mrs. Lafoe, Daphne Lafoe, principal of the Massac Preschool. Okay, and tell us some of the activities carded as part of preschool month for your school. Well, November has been designated preschool month and we have quite a number of activities planned for the students, including um, educational talks, field trips, and their fun day. And we also have a lot, an activity where it involves the parents. So everybody is included in early childhood education month. We're using the same theme that we use for the, our 40th anniversary for independence. So we have a planting day on the 14th, where the parents and the students will um, use recipes and make things, create things out of planting and on that day the parents will come and showcase what they did with their students at school. So we are going to have a, a fun day on that day and it is called planting day. So everything that they are going to present or bring to the school is going to be made out of planting. How involved would you say that the parents are you know, with the children? They are very much involved, although there are a few who are not, but the majority of the parents are very much involved. So we just moved from the Massac Preschool to the Canefield Preschool. We're here with Miss Winston, where she's actually going to tell us what her preschool started with as part of Preschool Month. Okay, hello everybody. Um, yesterday, we uh, went to Portsmouth at the um, Portsmouth Catholic Church with the other schools. And uh, yeah, we had a lovely church service with Father Sharpless. And then we had schools like from the Social Center, Canfield, Mahu, and a few others, and those from Portsmouth. And the service was very good, so that's one of the things that we started with. What would you say that the um, children enjoyed it? Oh, yes, the children enjoyed it. One of the children from my school said it bid in prayer, which I was very good. They sang the songs lovely, and they enjoyed their service. And then uh, after the service, we had a little match around the area in Portsmouth, and then back to the church. Okay, so we're with Miss Stout at the Shalom Preschool. Could you tell us a bit about the activities started for your preschool? Okay, for this month, we celebrate preschool month. We started with a church service at the Trinity Baptist Church. And then we are on week two. So for this week, tomorrow, we are going to have our funny t-shirt day. And um, we'll be going to the Goodway Playing Ground on Thursday. On Friday, we are having the teacher symposium. For me, I'm looking forward to the trail to syndicate. We are going to take them there to the um, Syndicate Falls and while we are there, since last month, we had our theme about the, all the, um, 
Oh my God, the Cicero Parrot and the Prime Minister. So we're going to take them to the Syndicate Falls so that they will have a better view of the Cicero Parrot. So there we have Theatre Day and I think the name of the uh, movie we're going to watch is Finding Dory. I'm not a TV girl so I don't know about Finding Dory but I guess the children they know about it so we'll be watching Finding Dory. Early childhood month is a month where the children usually socialize. We used to have it in June in the past but they, I think they figured out that June is more um, of a, a time where the children transit from one to the other, either from daycare to preschool or from preschool to primary school. So I think that is the whole um, month being named the transition month instead of early childhood education month. And then early childhood education month, they said that it would have been better if it was in November that the children could get an opportunity to really um, know about the independence celebration. How do you feel about COP in the award recently? Oh, <laughs> I felt elated. In the beginning, I was overwhelmed because um, a lot of people keep on saying, you, you can't, you know, you should get an award already, you should get an award. But I believe in things happening when it has to happen. If it doesn't have to happen, it will not happen. So I think 2016 was my year. And we got a lot of, um, I'm thinking 2015 wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, but Erica did a lot of damage to us. So it's only now we are seeing the benefits of Erica. Erica wasn't all bad. I know there was some good in her. So that is the good we are deriving from now. That's news. Andrea Bowie has your sports highlights. First up, Windward Islands Volcanoes opening batsman Dominican Tyron Theophil says he is looking forward to executing all what he had learned in training at the Regional 40 tournament which starts in Trinidad on Friday with the Windward Islands Volcanoes versus Trinidad Red Force. Theophil said he is targeting some centuries and hopes to make the West Indies team. He spoke to Channel 5 Sports in an exclusive interview. We've been, been training since the start of, you know, when the team get together from the Windward Islands tournament. You know, after that everybody, you know, came came home and which you know here is the base. So been training hard, you know, the physical part of it, even the mental part of it and you know, and as everybody know with the, with the batting and with the batting part of it, we you know we've been feeling for the last for the last years and stuff. We've been really working hard on it. Feeling pretty good, you know, put the hard work, you know, paid off at the, well before the um before we left to go to Antigua for the practice match. I had a few 2020s before that, so all that helped build my confidence in going to the 40, the practice 40 match in Antigua. So, so right now, I just hope to take that form into, into Trinidad, which is first game, which is on the weekend, which starts on Friday, and continued for the rest of the season. Theophil says he is always confident going into the 40 competitions. I've uh, always been confident from the start, from the time I start, you know, playing, playing my game, you know, playing cricket. Always, conf always a confident fella in everything I do, and I just, I just keep, I just keep into the basics, doing, you know, what's, what's right, and just let it take me from there. I just hope that, you know, the hard work I put in during the training, and just take it into the, into the regional tournament, and just hope that, you know, at least, at, well, I'm not saying at least, but let me just say, you know, that at least getting a f free to. 200s at the end of the season and, and a couple half centuries, you know, five or six half centuries, and I believe that will take me to about 800 and, and plus runs. The Volcano's opening batsman is confident he will make Dominica proud during this stint at the four day tournament. Yeah, just hoping everything gel, you know, from the weekend and from there, just the remainder of the games, and at the end of it, at least, you know, come up to 800 and plus runs. Just stay confident, you know, and, you know, I have faith in myself and I know the people out there have faith in me and I'm just going to do my usual, you know, try my best to, to keep scoring runs and even helping my team, you know, with the Volcanoes come out victorious at the end of the season. On to handball, coach of the national handball team, Joel Hamilton, says to improve the standard of handball, there must be a schools festival among secondary schools. He was speaking after Dominica participated in the handball tournament, which was held in Guadeloupe recently. Our well, first match we draw, we didn't, I think it was lack of I would say, competition. Yes, we train and we play together, but the whole competitive spirit, I mean, we, we, we only got that after the first match. So I think we should have a league or at least some festivals often as possible among the schools to help develop the game. 
and even take the, the game to the communities after, after that. Hamilton says preparations for such tournaments could have been better. Well, the preparation was good to a certain extent because, you know, it is, I've been in the school system. Most times we start practice about 4.45 and we are not lighting. So, but, but I must say the players and them because of their experience and maturity in the game, at times I can let them work in their own while I'm, while I'm working with, with the school. But when we came on the weekends, I think they did, they gave more than 100%. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I mean, probably we're not players coming back because handball is a very, very hard spot. It's very, very hard in terms of physical preparation and mental preparation. And wrapping things up with football, president of the Dominica Football Association, Glenn Etienne, said that he is happy after the first round of the Flow Premier League. Speaking to Channel 5 Sports, Etienne said he is looking forward to the second round of the competition, which starts on Friday. Mr. Etienne says the first round of the competition was very competitive, with just three points separating the first five teams. I, I believe the football season have started on a good note. I mean, you just mentioned that we had a very successful first round, I must say, and it's very competitive in the sense that the, 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 the teams in the, com in the top um, position are very competitive. Portsmouth, um, Exodus, South East, Harlem, Buffett State, you know, so it's not a, a, a runaway, you know, for anybody. And I must say we have restructured the, the Premier League this year. If you notice that all games in the first round have come to an end. Whereas before, what we've noticed in the past is where we would have maybe a team running away with the championship and then other teams struggling to play maybe their, 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 their um, um, full quota of their, their games. But we have seen this problem and we have restructured the league in the sense that whatever games that we do not play on this on a specific date set that we would feed them into the week and that have been very very um, good for us um, thus far. Etienne also mentioned the use of the Geneva playing field in Grand Bay for the second round of competition which was not used in the first round. We expect the second round to start on Friday and we're hoping to use um, the Geneva playing field and all the other playing field we had in um, Postmode and, and Dubla. Um, we will also have some um, discussion with the manager of the stadium um, to, to see whether we can get, not whether, but see if we can get some additional playing time at the stadium. So we expect to see a very um, competitive second round um, Premier League this year. The DFA boss says the association is taking steps to address one of the main challenges from last season. The challenge that we, ha we have, and I'm speaking for the, the team, is a transportation um, cost, you know. Why? Because the first round games, um, you can see 75% of the games were played in Portsmouth. You know, and that's because of the grounds in Granby was not um, up to standard. We have looked at it, I think it's playable, we're going to visit it again. And that will help the, 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 the cost of the, the teams in, in the rules or the salt part of it. So that will help them in terms of um, having the expense that they had in, in the first round. We will always, um, well not make noise, but we'll always um, be at um, discussion with the stadium manager to see if we can get some more playing time because we all know that's our prime um, venue um, to, to, to football or to any sport in, in, in Dominica. But other than that, um, I haven't seen any um, serious problems of, of, of the first round. The weather forecast is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Corrette Joseph. We start off this evening by taking a look at earlier satellite imagery. And what it shows is this area of convection associated with a surface trough approaching the Lesser Antilles. Visible satellite imagery showed few low level clouds over Dominica throughout the afternoon. Radar image indicated some widely scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles this afternoon. Conditions for tonight, increasingly cloudy skies with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies 
with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity. Seas slide to moderate in open water with waves up to 5 feet. Some northerly swells can be expected by late Wednesday into Thursday. Therefore, small craft operators and sea bathers, you are advised to exercise some caution. Taking a look at the extended forecast, a surface trough will affect the area on Wednesday and Thursday, resulting in mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity tomorrow Wednesday. Cloudy skies with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity during the earlier part of Thursday. However, as the day progresses, an improvement in conditions can be expected. Partly cloudy skies with some scattered showers. And on Friday, partly cloudy skies as well with some scattered showers. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks, you are advised to exercise some caution. Across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected over the extreme northern portion of the chain. However, cloudy skies with scattered showers and thunderstorm activity can be expected over the central and southern portion. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies in New York, Miami, London and Beijing with some rain in New York and London and some thunderstorm in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.05 a.m. and set at 5.34 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Dominicans seek to take advantage of free movement within CARICOM. Efforts to promote Dominica's citizenship by investment program underway in five countries. And an appeals court matter involving police officer and Calypsonian Abel John Baptist and Dr. Philbert Aaron pushed back to early 2017. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona John Baptist, and to all our viewers around the world, thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.